Hi everybody, how's it going today? Thanks for watching another video. I'm uh, in the field here, north of the dairy. As you'll see in a second here, I just helped my dad. Uh, he had popped the track off the skid steer. So we got that back up. We've been uh, cleaning up some tree rows that we have on a couple of fields of ours. We've got this attachment on our skid steer. Essentially, it's grinding up uh, anything above ground. Can grind up to I don't know six six to eight inch trees, but the smaller the better. My dad was uh, grinding up trees here, knocked the track off on the left side. This is the wheel supposed to be in there. It's front and back all the way underneath. So we're gonna take the pressure off the tracks and see if we can get this track rolled back on. Guys, up storm. Storm, yeah, I can't. Nay, ups, up the track, storm going. Yeah, and the dicht by the, yeah, decomp up there. That's all right. Yeah. I try to take as much pressure off as possible, and then we're gonna try to get that front pop back on, and then drive forward and see if we can get it to all pop back on. in. Keep driving and chill and pop it all in. Just got the back. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We got the bottom on and the top popped off. There we go. Now we got it all back on. Oh, good. Stop it. Good. Got to pop back on, then we got to put 
grease back in get the tension back up and should be good to go just got the track back on i did film a little bit of that but i didn't get all of it went better than i was uh, thinking it would i was thinking we were probably gonna have to bring something out here to lift it up but we got it back on we will have to come back and check the pressure it's uh, grease that keeps tension on these tracks and we'll likely have to add a little bit of uh, tension here again and then it gets back to the farm today. we've got this uh row of trees and i'll go over to uh to the other field we were working on that one's just about done I think we better get out of here before I get hit in the head with a rock or a piece of wood. So this, there were some trees planted here by the looks of it, but a lot of these here just grew on their own. There isn't really a whole lot of good trees left in this tree row here. Well, I'll take you over to the one we were working on. Not really in much better shape. We did the trees. Uh, right in front of the farm probably four years ago or so we bought this uh four or five years maybe even longer ago at this point we bought this attachment for a skid steer and went through all the rows there kind of cleaned up all the dead trees or as many as we could and we replanted some new ones but i think if we want to do it right we almost have to take half the trees out replant them and then maybe in 10 years take the other half out or something like that but Getting it cleaned out was a good start. But I'll take you over to this uh, other tree, tree row, the tree rows that we were working on, shelter belt. There aren't really very many good trees left. So kind of debating at this point what to do with them. And I think, I think the best route to go is to just take them out because there's, yeah, like I said, what is left, they're not in the best shape either. We'll show you that in a second here. It's uh, 10 degrees here today, but it almost feels like it's uh, 50 coming off of that cold spell. So this is uh, this is north of the farm on the piece of uh, land that we own. We uh, we started on on the end here. I took out some trees there with the excavator uh, probably two months ago already. At this point, we're late late uh, october i think maybe it was just before that snow and then uh, went through picked up all the bigger trees out of here and on, on the uh the east edge we got some piled up here there's another pile further down and then we've been going through with the skid steer and trying to grind up as much as we can but as you can see walking through here there really aren't many trees left of what used to be here so right where i'm standing used to be a row it was uh, would have been what one two three four five six and there was a seventh row and then there was some bushes and shrubs on that side we chopped those all up so originally the plan was to clean this thing up a little bit maybe we could uh, try to revive it a little but those trees that I took out with the excavator down at the end even some of the better looking ones they were all hollow on the inside just getting rotted away just at the end of their life, I suppose, even some of these smaller ones, I think they're, they're, they're too close together, probably too much competition, and they've kind of killed each other, I think. So the one in front of the farm, I definitely want to save because we get good cover at the farm for that. But this tree row, I'm, I don't know what the best thing to do with this is. More than likely, we'll take this out, I think, completely, and then we can farm it. They were planted for a reason many years ago. But if we're going to plant new trees, we're definitely going to do it by the farm instead of uh, on this field out here. Farming practices have changed a lot since then too, so I'm not super concerned about dust and wind protection here. But it's definitely nice to have those trees in front of the farm in the wintertime. Get some protection from that northwest wind that we uh, get quite often. 
does make a pretty big difference and even for snow if we didn't have that that tree belt really catches a lot of snow in the winter time really helps uh, keep some of the snow away from the farm not all of it obviously but well, maybe uh, if I have time grab the drone then I can get a little bit closer to do some filming of that thing up close but you kind of see it here we came through here just leaves it uh, I don't know kind of like almost like a mulch but there it doesn't go below ground at all it just goes at ground level so the roots from all these uh, trees that were down they're still in there the trunk still in there for the most part but if we do want to take this all out and farm it then we'll have to deal with that then but I mean if there's no growth on top eventually those are gonna rot away on their own too just won't be able to come through here with a cultivator but a disc should be uh, no problem I, I wouldn't think anyways or we'd have to get something that kind of uh, goes a little below ground and chops chops some of the stuff up below ground too but we'll cross that bridge when we get there it's uh, Sunday today my dad's been kind of working on this off and on a little bit I haven't really ran it at all this fall when we did the shelter belt in front of the farm I did that myself goes fairly good but it's a pretty slow going process as you can imagine trying to grind up trees just a little bit at a time but the deader they are the the quicker they grind up and the smaller they are the quicker they grind up just can't get carried away and uh, try to take one of these two foot wide ones out because that doesn't uh, that doesn't work very well but uh, yeah thought I'd show you guys this we'll maybe drive down to the end there there's even less trees on the north end of this than there is on the south end here just getting to be at the end of their life I, I think
closer towards the uh, north end here now. So uh, as you can see, I mean, there's still some bigger trees, but uh, quite a few less. Really not much left at all here. Because even, I mean, that one's dead. That one's dead. Those, both of those are dead. Even a lot, even a lot of the ones that are still standing are uh, dead or dying. Kind of too bad because somebody uh, spent a lot of uh, a lot of time planting all these by hand uh, many years ago, long before I was here. There was also on the edge of this, so there was another row of trees, probably about right here. Or maybe there was another two rows. I don't, can't quite remember, but there's quite a bit of uh, chips out this far, so maybe there was two more rows, or maybe there was a row of trees and then a little bit of shrubbery or whatever it was right on the edge. But it was all full of rocks and pieces of wood and all kinds of metal that had been dumped over here before we owned this property. Don't really like to dump rocks and other stuff in random places, but... Typically, uh, tree rows, that's where a lot of those things end up because that's where you don't have to be with your farm equipment. But we've been kind of uh, cleaning that up here. I don't know, when some of our guys, Sam, Jose, Luis, Refugio, when they've uh, had a couple hours here or there, come over with the rock bucket, clean some of those up, bring them to a bigger rock pile we have. Kind of shape, shape this up a little bit, especially if we're planning to uh, knock the whole tree row out. We definitely want to make sure we can get as many of those things out of here. Make it a lot nicer. Uh, you're not running into a bunch of rocks and stuff when you start farming it. But thought I'd uh, show you guys what we were doing here. If I was having lunch. My dad called that he popped the track off. So I thought we could uh, make a quick video of uh, what we're working on. It does look uh, really nice cleaned up like this. I will say that it's too bad that they're that the uh, rows of trees were not in better shape because then it uh, could potentially help extend the life of this shelter belt maybe a little bit but it's hard to say the one in front of the dairy we planted some new ones in the center but of course then it doesn't get a lot of sunlight so it's almost yeah like I was saying before we should take like the west the west half of it out plant new trees and then maybe in 10 years the east half just so you don't lose that protection, but you still uh, get some get some new trees growing there. I don't know, maybe a project for the next couple years. But I think we'll uh, I'll end this video here. If you guys have questions, comments, post them down below. Appreciate you guys watching, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next one.